Are you ready for your interview? Yeah. Do you make it? Are you buy it? The camera? Yeah. Oh, I don't know how to make a camera. I bought it. I know. What's that for? That is the tripod. It's the thing that holds the camera. It's kind of like legs for a camera. And it's called tri because there's three legs. One, two, oh. three. Tri means three. Three? Yeah. Wow. And I know that you're on your news at your high school and you, you deliver reports. Yeah. Are you interested in the way that film works? Yeah. What's your favorite thing about cameras? Um. <laughs> Lights! Camera! Action! I like that one. That's fun, isn't it? Yeah. Zach, you ready for the first question? Yeah. What is your family like? My mom. My mom and my daddy. What about your brother? And my brother. Do you love them all? Yes. How would you describe your sons? Uh. I would describe them with joy. They are, um, that Zach is super outgoing, loves to be around people, loves to have fun. Ryan is super loyal, and when he loves you, he loves you for life. <laughs> they try to have fun, and one of the beauties of their disability is they don't know what they don't know. So they don't get caught up on thinking about what they can't do. They just see what they can do. I was going to sit beside Ryan and interview him, but he ran to his room. <laughs> is he typically the shy brother? He is very shy and very stubborn. So if there's something he doesn't want to do, he, it's impossible to get him to do it. Well, I still want to learn all about Ryan. Okay. What would you like to share? Ryan is loyal. If he loves you, he loves you for life and he will ask about you a thousand times. He's very proud of his brother and whenever Zach is on the school news, he comes flying off the bus squealing excited to tell us about what Zach did. Do these two have the same disability? They do. I always say that the, I compare it to an ice cream sundae, the ice cream's the same but the toppings are different. So Zach has more speech than Ryan does, um, but Ryan is a little bit more manipulative, a little uh, bit more. The, um, I mean for Halloween. Gonna be minions for Halloween? Yeah. Are you both gonna be minions for Halloween? Yeah. If you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? I go to a movie theater. You love the movies. It's go. always fun to go to yeah, the Yeah, go to the movie theater to see the super dog. To see what? The super dog. The super dog. Super dog. Super dog? Mm -hmm. That's a movie, Super Dog? Yeah. Is that one of your favorites? Yeah. All right, let's, let's imagine this. We're going to the movies, we're gonna go see Super Dog. What snacks are we getting? Popcorn. If somebody wants to communicate and form a bond with these two, how should they start? By just spending time and listening to them and trying to engage them in conversation. Zach will talk to just about anybody. Ryan's a little bit more like a cat where he'll, he takes his time to warm up. And then once he decides that you're okay, he's stuck on you like glue. And sometimes when we have babysitters or respite care, Zach will take a lot of the attention and then Ryan will start to misbehave because he wants attention too. Um, so it's, I mean, I guess you just kind of naturally get used to balancing the two personalities. I'm not sure if it's on the camera, but it's, a little funny, Ryan's poking his head, kind of looking at us Yeah. as we're having this interview. Um, does he sometimes open up when he realizes the environment's not intimidating and then possibly walk out and sit beside you? He does. It takes a while. Um, like our youth director, we've been, Zach's talked about youth group a lot. She will like go up to Ryan just quietly and he'll often respond when he's initially you know hiding in a corner she's really good about drawing him out and i think it just goes to show like in ryan's terms and in ryan's time he's willing to open up is it okay if i just ask him if he would like to come out sure in, like the manner you discuss and if not that's perfectly fine yeah cool i'll go ask him hey ryan i would love to meet you and learn more about you if you'd like to sit down you can if you want but you don't have to Ryan, do you want me to leave or do you want me to stay? Stay. Stay. Can you scoot over here? 
So you wanna hide in the corner? Yeah, you're fine there. Is it okay if your mom scoots a little closer to you? Can I sit by you? Ryan, what is that paper you have there? Let me show him, it's his notes. So he loves to make notes. Would you mind holding that up? I wanna zoom in. What are these notes about? What are they about, Ryan? Mama. About mama? Yeah. <laughs> Movies are a lot of fun. What's your, oh, your favorite? One of my favorite movies, I have a lot of favorite movies, but one of my favorite movies is Lion King. Did you ever see that one? Oh, the second one? I actually haven't seen the second one. I just like the first one. Oh, yeah. Got it. My favorite character in Lion King, well, let me have you guess. Who do you think my favorite character is? Simba. Simba is one of my favorites. I love Simba, but my absolute favorite, I'll give you a clue. He's a baboon. Baboon. Like a monkey. Um, monkey. Yeah, he's a monkey. So do you think my favorite is Pumba or Rafiki? Rafiki. Yeah, Rafiki. I think Rafiki's so funny. Yeah. What is their disability? It is a, in the big umbrella, it's a congenital defect of glycosylation, which basically means their fats and sugars and proteins don't connect correctly. But their, theirs is located on the PIGN gene. And so it, it's called multiple congenital abnormalities, hypotonia seizure syndrome one or two. I forget. Uh, P-I-G-N, bios, wait. I knew I was gonna forget what it's called. P-I-G-N biosynthesis defect. Um, it shows up with seizures, low muscle tone, developmental delays. And some kids have it more severe than others. Some kids have other, um, some feeding issues and a few other disabilities. How many people in the world have this disability? Diagnosed, we're probably somewhere between 100 and 150 people, but I'm sure there's many, many more. So, when you play uh, guitar? I love playing guitar. I play guitar often. My favorite type of music is rock and roll. Rock and roll? Zach. Yeah? I have a funny question for you. Yeah. If you had one wish, Ma. what would you wish for? Uh, Ma. I would for... Ma. You can say it louder. Um, I'm a rich play guitar. You wish you could play guitar more? Better? Yeah, but... Do you love music? Yeah. <laughs> Zach, tell me about your dad. Do you say he's nice? Yeah. What's the most important thing for others to understand about Zach and Ryan? Um, I think the most important thing is, is that they're also like everybody else. They want to be loved and accepted and, and talked to and, and they want to do what kind of what the group is doing and they want to be involved. I want to be, um, I want to be in the kind of... You want to be what? Concert. You want to be in the concert? Wait. Yeah. So you want to be in front of people playing music? Yeah. Why would you like to do that? Okay, it's my favorite too. Do you enjoy putting on a show for people? Yeah. Do you want people to clap for you? Yeah. Does that make you feel good? Yes. They have certainly gotten more independent. They, um,. Yeah, they try more things, like they're learning how to work the microwave. Um, one of my goals is for them to somehow live in a group home or not with us the rest of their lives. So there's some skills, like self-help skills that we're working on, like how to effectively take showers or how to do laundry, oh. how to change their sheets. Zach, um, is it easy to use the microwave? Uh, easy. Uh, yeah, easy. Can you do it by yourself? Uh, I do that myself. What do you make by yourself? Popcorn. Say it louder. Popcorn. Mom, I'm about 
Cotton the popcorn. Popping the popcorn? In the microwave? No, ask. Go. While I was interviewing Zach, I noticed he had a little bit of drool. A lot, yeah. Does he have that all the time? Yeah, that's our biggest concern with him. Because I think it's going to keep him from a lot of opportunities. He loves food service, but it's difficult. So when he's at school in the cafe, he still wears a mask. And I know you work at your school's cafe? Yes. Do you make the drinks or do you work at the cashier and work with the money? Yeah. You do both? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you like that. I can tell by your big smile that you really enjoy doing that. Yeah. What's your favorite thing about working at the school cafe? Um, uh, when me and my new friend from school. You get to meet everybody? Uh-huh. Yeah. That's a great opportunity to make new friends and socialize and just meet everyone at your school. Yeah. He likes playing with the leaf blower. And uh, what we'll do is we'll put the leaf blower uh, vertically and then we'll like float mm -hmm. balls up in the air in it in the garage. That kind of stuff. He likes that, right? Yeah. 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 You think that's fun? Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. I was asking you questions about Ryan and as soon as I asked if it's okay if I go talk to him, he came out. Yeah. Is he always listening and understanding? I think so. And I think we forget that because he doesn't have a vocabulary. We forget that he knows what we're saying. Do you all do that together? Yeah, we all do that together. All right. Hmm? More. More? Yeah. You mean, yeah, we can do that more. We'll do that afterwards? Yeah. Okay. And that. Well, we can do it with Zach. Ryan, do you like playing that game with your dad? Yeah. <laughs> Is Zach's vocabulary more extensive than Ryan's? Significantly more extensive. I think Ryan, the words that he can speak clearly are probably less than a hundred. Um, and a lot of things sound the same, so it's kind of like playing a guessing game, like book and bus and boat all say the, sound the same to him, so we have to figure out the context, or some of his friends all have similar sounding names, so we have to guess who he's talking about. I see Ryan, he just opened his pen, he's writing a note right there. How often does he do that? Whenever he has paper. If we go to the Dollar Tree and I let him pick something out, he'll pick out paper, or he'll find paper. We actually have to hide our printer paper, otherwise he'll take all of it and put little notes on it. If you have one kid with this diagnosis, is it more likely to have a second? Um, well, it goes back to basic genetics. I read a statistic where it, Mark and I are both carriers, so I, we both have a 0.1% chance of having the, the ability to pass this along to our children. And so for us to find each other, to get married, to have kids is pretty rare. And then... After we had Zach, a geneticist told us that we would have a 25% chance of having a second child with the disorder. So it just goes back to the basic genetics. How about Halloween? How about Halloween? Spooky Halloween! I, I kind of like scary movies, I'm going to be honest. I like horror. Yeah. I like scary things. Right. Ah. Do you like that in Halloween when things go... Ah! And they scare you? Huh? Ah! What do you think is the scariest monster? Is it Frankenstein, Dracula, a mummy? A mummy. Mummies are scary. Mummy is... Yeah. I... Ooh, a mummy. Hey? Does he look forward to Halloween a lot? Yes, he usually picks his costume out right after Halloween is done and then asks about it for a little while and then forgets and then by August he's asking for his costume again and we order it mid-September. Do you mean right after one Halloween's done he picks out his next costume? <laughs> yes. What were you last year, Zach? I uh, yeah. Spider-Man? Spider-Man. So Zach, I've asked you a bunch of questions. Do you have any questions for me? Yeah, I asked you. What's your favorite thing to do? Great question. My favorite thing to do is to spend time with my family and also play volleyball. That's my favorite sport. Oh, volleyball? I love volleyball. Do you have it in your house? I do have a volleyball, yeah. And then I go to the beach and I play with my friends. Wow. I do like how you allowed him to make his decision. You allowed him to go in the back and not participate. And then when he came out, you allowed him to change his mind. Why is that important? Well, because we ultimately want him to be independent and to be able to control what he can. And forcing him hasn't worked since he's gotten
big enough that we can't pick him up and carry him. So we sometimes we just let him ride the wave. Um, but ultimately, I think he needs to be able to make his own decisions and, decisions and speak for himself. How do you feel as you sit between your two boys? I feel lucky that, yeah. that I get to be on this journey with them. Um, I feel proud of how much they've been able to accomplish. And I feel excited about what their future holds.